Today I want to talk about an exciting discovery in the field of uh, cancer research, specifically pertaining to pancreatic cancer. As most of you might know or have heard, that pancreatic cancer is very deadly. In fact, uh, we don't have much cure or any therapies for that. And one of the reasons is that the pancreatic cancer gets diagnosed very, very late in its uh, stages. And so by the time the diagnosis is made, there's not a lot we could do about it. And there's been a few uh, famous people who've actually passed away from pancreatic cancer, including Patrick Swayze, you know, the star of Ghost, and um, uh, Steve Jobs. And uh, recently, Alex Trebek uh, was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. He's putting up a good fight, but uh, the statistics say that uh, the prognosis is really grim. So we need some new advances in not only diagnosing, but also treating pancreatic cancer. And like I said, because it gets diagnosed in its late stages, we need therapies that could be targeted toward that stage of the disease. So one of the exciting discoveries that was made recently is that the fungi that is um, colonized within our gastrointestinal system could play a role in the progression of pancreatic cancer. And this was a really exciting out of the box uh, thinking and discovery. So let's take a look at what the researchers found and what this means for exciting new therapeutic targets and approaches for uh, stopping the progression of pancreatic cancer. So here is a depiction of a human pancreas. Uh, this is the human pancreas that's connected to the gastrointestinal system, specifically the duodenum. And on this side, I have a cartoon depiction of a tumor growing inside the pancreas. So what was the first and initial observation that got the rest of the research going? Well, the researchers first look at, looked at the fungal colonies within the healthy pancreas compared to those people who have pancreatic cancer. And excitingly, what they found is that these two uh, bacteria uh, fungal species were completely different between the healthy controls and, and the pancreatic cancer patients. Here we could see that those in red, which are the healthy controls, uh, cluster differently compared to those with the uh, pancreatic cancer, suggesting that the pancreas has a different species of fungi in, in the setting of a pancreatic cancer. And then when they compared the pancreatic uh, fungal colony and uh, these different species within the same patient and their gut, what they found was that within the gastrointestinal system, as could be seen here in um, red, the, the species uh, segregated differently compared to the pancreatic uh, cancer pancreas. In other words, within uh, those that have the pancreatic cancer, uh, if you compare to the normal gut um, fungal species, uh, it's different than the ones that's found within the pancreas, suggesting that there is some kind of what's called dysbiosis, meaning there's a, there's a change in the fungal uh, population and frequency in, within the cancer. So this prompted them to ask whether these differences that they're observing between the healthy controls and the cancer patients and within the cancer patient, their gut versus the pancreas is playing any role in the development of the, of the cancer. So in order to study this, they generated uh, animal models of pancreas, uh, uh, pancreatic cancer, excuse me. And so what they did was they removed the gene from this uh, mouse and that caused them to be more susceptible to developing pancreatic cancer. So when they took these mice, um, here is a cartoon depiction of once again of a pancreas. Let's imagine this being a mouse pancreas with a tumor growing inside. And so they first asked, uh, where are these uh, fungus coming from? Uh, so they injected uh, fluorescently or colored labeled um, fungi into their gastrointestinal system. And what they noticed that remarkably within 30 minutes, these fungi were already found within the pancreas, su suggesting that the intestinal normal pancreas uh, bact fungal species are moving up towards the pancreas. And we know that they're not exactly the same species that's in the, in the intestine or their uh, proportions are different, 
Uh, but nonetheless, this is showing us that the route of going into the pac pancreas is via the gastrointestinal system. So then they ask, well, once the fungi gets there, what do they do? So what they noticed was that when they looked within the tumor, is that the fungi, because they're uh, essentially a, a non-human cell, it activates the immune system. Specifically, it activates what's called the complement system. And the complement system is one of the most basic and fundamental mechanisms of the human in immune system that's been developed to fight different kinds of infections. So this uh, immune system is there to protect you against infections of all kinds. But in this case, what's happening is when the fungus gets into the pancreas, what it does is that it activates this protein called C3, which is part of the complement immune system. When C3 becomes activated, it then is converted into another protein or the, it's, it's essentially part of the C3 gets cut and becomes a different protein called C3A. And when C3A becomes formed, what they were able to show is that the C3A then binds to the actual cancer cells within the pancreas and causes them to start to grow. Now, this is an exciting discovery because here they're linking a change within the uh, fungal species within the pancreas and now they're showing that the fungus when it gets into the pancreas it activates the immune system which is normally there to protect you but in this case the immune system when it becomes activated starts to promote the cancer and allows it to grow even bigger so the next question that the researchers asked is is it possible to stop the progression or the growth of this cancer cell or the tumor by either blocking the, the fungi, giving antifungals, or is it possible to block the growth of the tumor by turning off the C3 protein? So these are the experiments that they did next, and these are the ones that were very profound and exciting. Here what we could see is that uh, the researchers are measuring the over, overall tumor volume within these animals. And so in blue is the animal that did not get any kind of treatment. And uh, so they are normal animals that have a tumor growing inside. So we'll be comparing everything to the blue bar. And again, they're measuring the total volume of the tumor. And what they did was uh, they gave these animals uh, amphotericin, which is an antifungal used for treating fungal infections. And what they found and very exciting was that the tumor burden or the volume of the tumor was almost twice as less, suggesting that by killing these fungal species within the pancreas, you're able to slow down the growth of the tumor. Now, how exciting is that? The next thing that they did was they said, uh, can we block the C3 protein and see if, um, if it also slows down the growth of the, back, uh, of the, the pancreatic cancer? And in fact, what they did was they removed the C3 protein from the animal. And lo and behold, what they saw was that the tumors did not grow as fast. Now, this is exciting discovery because now we have essentially two different approaches that we could use to target pancreatic cancer, which I mentioned in the beginning of the video that there are not a lot of drugs for this. So one of them would be to potentially give uh, patients antifungals which would hopefully help slow down the progression of the disease. And the other one is to target the C3 protein using pharmacological mechanisms and slow down the progression of the tumor and allow the patient a, a fighting chance to, to overcome the disease. Now, this has been very exciting. And in fact, the researchers were able to show that when they gave these antifungals in conjunction with chemotherapy, the results were significantly better. So for people that have pancreatic cancer or no loved ones or friends or families who, who have pancreatic cancer, this opens up a whole new hope and avenues for pers uh, pursuing new therapeutic targets. So this is very exciting. It's been published only a, a, a month uh, ago. And so there still needs to be some more investigation, but this is definitely very convincing and it's a nice area of pursuing. Now there's still a couple of questions. One of them is uh, what 
how do the back the fungi get there to begin with what's their purpose of migrating up into the pancreas or what drives their process or um, has the inflammation of the activation of the c3 actually being triggered by these um, uh, fungal species now those are questions that further needs to be investigated but for now we have these exciting results that i think will be very very uh, important for therapeutic developments well, that's all I have for you guys today. And for those of you guys reading up on the um, original article, here is a reference to the paper published in Nature about a month ago. So if you want to do further reading, by all means, here's the reference for that. And um, with that, uh, I want to thank you all for listening once again. Please don't forget to subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you during my next presentation. Thank you.